The first one is that this is a flat plane here, and this is the same flat plane, it must be parallel to this plane. That's a must. If you don't do that, you can't use Gauss' law. The second one is that these vertical walls that you have here are indeed perpendicular to that plane. In other words, these are parallel, and these are ver exactly vertical. If you don't make them vertical, if you do this, you're dead in the waters. You can't use Gauss' law very effectively. And then the third argument, which is very important, that this flat surface is a distance d above the plane, and that this flat surface is exactly the same distance below the plane. And you can already smell why that is important. Because if you ever want to use a symmetry argument, if this plane is uniformly charged, the electric field vector here, in terms of magnitude, obviously must be the same as there, in terms of magnitude, maybe not in terms of direction, as long as this d is the same as that d. So that's why it's important that the two d's are the same. And the only charge that you have inside when you apply Gauss's law is the charge which is, of course, here. That's the only charge inside that closed box. If you work this out at home, you will find an amazing result. You will find that the electric flux through these vertical walls, zero. Nothing comes out through the vertical walls. Think about it, why that is. Use symmetry arguments. But something comes out here or comes in here if it is a negative charge, and something goes out here. And so you only have two contributions from those two end plates. You'll work on that, and you will find, perhaps to your amazing result, that the electric field equals sigma divided by 2 epsilon 0, and that it is independent of how far you are from that plane. Whether you're very far away or whether you're close, it's the same. So if this is that plane, and if the plane is positively charged, then E would be like this here, and E would be like this here, and it would be independent of distance, and if it is negatively charged, the E would be like so, and it would be like, like so, pointing towards the plane, and in all cases, would the magnitude be sigma divided by 2, epsilon 0. Does it mean if I go very far away from that plane that it is still independent of the distance? Yeah, if that plane is infinitely large. But if the plane is only as large as the lecture hall here, then clearly it would hold very accurately as long as I stay relatively close to the plane. In other words, if my distance to the plane is small compared to the linear size of the plane. But if I go miles away, well, of course, then that plane is charged, looks like a point charge. If I'm five miles away from 26100, if the plane is only as large as this lecture hall, then it looks like a point charge, and obviously the electric field will then fall off as 1 over r squared. So when I say the E field doesn't change with distance, it means, of course, that you have to be relatively close to the surface, relative to the linear size of that surface. So you are going to prove this, and I'm going to use this now to calculate for you a much more complicated configuration of two charged planes. But I use that result. That's very important. And suppose I have here a, a plate, very large, nothing is infinitely large, of course, and it has a surface charge density plus sigma, and I have here a plate which has surface charge density minus sigma, and the separation between these two plates happens to be d. And the question now is, what is the electric field anywhere in space? Here, here, and here. And we'll think of them as being infinitely large, each plate. And I now use the superposition principle, I say to myself, aha, this plate alone, forget this one, 
this plate alone would give me an E vector. Oh, stick to my colors. Give me an E vector like so. And that is sigma divided by 2 epsilon 0. This one is also pointing away from this. Sigma divided by 2 epsilon 0. And here it's also sigma divided by 2 epsilon 0 because it's independent of the distance to this plate. What is the negative charge doing? Well, the negative charge has E vectors pointing towards it. So here I have an E vector, which is sigma divided by 2 epsilon 0. Here I have one that is sigma divided by 2 epsilon 0. And I have one that is pointing towards the plate, which is sigma divided by 2 epsilon 0. I use the superposition principle. I can add electric vectors. And when I do that, I find that these two cancel each other out. So the electric field here is 0. The electric field here is sigma divided by epsilon 0. The two support each other. They are both in the same direction. And the electric field here is again 0. And that is an amazing result. Of course, it's only accurate if these plates are extraordinarily large. And so if I have to draw the field lines in the situation like this, then the field lines would be like so, if the upper plate is positive, and the field in here would be the same everywhere, it would be outside zero and outside zero here. Now, clearly, this cannot be true if you get into this area here where you are near the end of these plates. That is not possible. Why not? Well, you can't use your symmetry argument, so Gauss law is not going to help you if you get anywhere near this area. And it is very difficult to calculate the electric field configuration when you are near the edges, which we call the, the fringe field. Maxwell, of course, was a clever man, and he knew how to do that. Today we can also do that very easily with uh, computers. But I'll show you from Maxwell's original publications that in a situation like that, he was already perfectly capable of calculating these electric field lines. And you have these two horizontal plates. Which one is plus and which one is nine? This doesn't matter. He doesn't put arrows in there. And what you see is an extremely strong field inside the two plates. Remember that the density of field lines tells you something about the strength of the field. Very strong field. But when you get near the edge, the field is not really zero. The field strength drops very rapidly because, look, the density is very low. But it is not zero, and the electric field is not zero here either, and is not zero there. In our assumption, in our simplification, we have, however, assumed that the plate is so large that we don't have to worry about any end effects. And in that case, the electric field is only existent in between the plates, but not anywhere else. I now want to demonstrate to you some of the things that we have learned today. And the first thing that I want to demonstrate is that the electric field outside a large plane 